Okay, so uh, welcome everybody to this uh, webinar on master's program in geoinformatics at Aalto University. Uh, my name is Maria Nordman and here's also Matti Vaaja from our program. Uh, we are, let's see. So what's the contents of this webinar? We are going to first introduce uh, Aalto a, a bit then a few were, then more words about our GIS, so the Geoinformatics Master's Program, about the content and structure of our studies, and some other uh, other opportunities and options we have. Uh, then something about the admission criteria. Uh, then we also have one student uh, telling about her experience. And then if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat anytime. We'll have some dedicated um, moments to answer those questions if you if you write them in the chat. So let's start with some introductions. So my name is Maria Nordman. I'm the program di director. Um, currently, I'm assistant professor in geodesy and positioning. And um, we also have Matti Vaja. Do you want to say something yourself? Yes. Hello. I'm Matti Vaja. I'm also assistant professor and my field is digital photogrammetry and I'm also the program vice director. So please welcome. Okay. So uh, first of all, a few words about Aalto. I think this was your turn now, Matti. Yes, I can start. So about out of university, uh, we are quite young university. We are founded in 2010. And uh, our, our background is that in 2010, three of Finland's uh, leading universities merged to form Aalto University. So uh, Aalto represents uh, these three different fields. So we have the background from University of Technology, University of Art and Design, and Helsinki School of Economics. And uh, our national mission is to strengthen Finland's innovative capacity through uh, first class research, art and education. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, uh, even though uh, Aldo is young university, it performs very well in international um, university rankings. So uh, we place ninth of all, all young universities globally. We are also uh, highly ranked in multidisciplinary and collaborative research. Uh, in terms of international uh, approach, we are also very highly ranked. And also uh, in terms of advancing responsible consumption and production, and the link of uh, link to the sustainable development goals is something that other university uh, pays particular attention. Okay, next slide. Uh, Aalto University uh, locates in Espo, Finland. So it's multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary community and also very international community. We have about uh, 12,000 degree students and staff about 4,000 4, of which nearly 400 are professors and a share of international academic faculties, 40%. Uh, 
so uh, these different fields are as art and design, uh, technology and economics are presented here. Okay, next slide. Uh, about uh, our campus, uh, all these three fields are located on the on the same same campus. So our multidisciplinary community allows you to meet people from different fields and, and backgrounds. Uh, being student in, in Otaniemi, it, it is, uh, we can say it, it's a holistic experience. Science, science, it's possible to live, study, work, and spend your free time all in the same campus area. Uh, there are wide, wide range of services as shopping center, restaurants, cafes, bars, uh, metro station and uh, bus lines and even a tram line is coming in uh, 2024. Uh, so I can also say that Otanem is, is very beautiful place located by uh, seaside and next to the nature reserves. Uh, next slide. Uh, something about everyday life at Alto. Uh, we know that world class education is only a part of the study experience. But uh, we want to offer comprehensive learning experience and encourage students to find the best ways to, uh, for them to learn, both uh, inside and outside the classrooms. It's uh, also easy to get by with English as it is very well spoken at Aalto and in Finland as a whole. Okay, uh, about uh, Finland, there has been surveys that uh, Finland, Finland is the happiest country in the world. Uh, we are quite safe and clean country as uh, having fresh air, and, and our, our water is always drinkable. We are close to nature. Uh, it's quite easy to come here from different parts of, of uh, Europe with the airplane. So it's about three hours away from, for example, from Paris or London or Berlin. Okay, next, some other rankings about Finland. So happiest country in the world. We are happy to say that uh, also greenest country in the world, uh, best quality of life to rank third, uh, most stable country in the world, and, and many, many other highly rank, ranks about the Finland can, can be found. Okay, uh, maybe let's start this master program presentation more detailed by Maria. Yeah, please open your microphone. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, so, yes, our master's program in, in geoinformatics um, is given by our master geoinformatics research group. We have four fields. Uh, we have four professors and then we also have two university lecturers and one professor of practice. 
So our fields are remote sensing where we have Professor Mina Rautiainen. Then there's the laser scanning and photogrammetry where, where Matti, Matti is, and then also our lecturer Petri Ranholm. Uh, then there's the geoinformation technology where Professor is Henrik Tenkanen and then lecturer is Jussi Nikander. And then my field is geodesy and positioning. And I, I have a colleague, a professor of practice, Miriam Bilker Koivula. And what we, um, what we have at Aalto, we have these research and study facilities. So, um, we have 3D studio, which is linked to Matti's work. Then uh, Mina's group, so the remote sensing group has the spectrometry lab um, in the same floor. We have genetic equipment to use in the courses. And there's also the stereo workstation that is needed for uh, photogrammetry work. Do you want to say something about the 3D studio? Yes, there are wide range of different uh, sensors and softwares for collecting 3D uh, measurement data as laser scanners and cameras. And uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it is used also in, in teaching, I think. But yeah, so we are using this in teaching and research our uh, students from different levels as bachelor of students and master degree students and even doctoral students are actively using this uh, 3D studio environment. Yes. Um... Then what we have um, at the geoinformatics, we we thought about these three top reasons to study in our program. So we cover all the fields of geoinformatics. So we have, uh, yeah, like you already saw, we have remote sensing, photogrammetry, laser scanning, geodesy, and then also this geoinformation technology. And when we have a w wide range of subjects, that gives also a wide range of professions where you can end up. So many options in using the um, education in the in the work life. We are also not only Alto is multidisciplinary. Also, our program is multidisciplinarity because uh, multidisciplinary because we. Uh, we mo mostly do these different techniques that can be used on different fields. And then when you learn the basic skills and abilities of geoinformatics, you can use them in any any field you like, and you can also be the kind of the contact point, point between fields. And of course, uh, the importance of spatial data is increasing, and our master's program is about spatial data. So major part of the data in the world, so I think somewhere it was said that 80% of the uh, data in the world today is somehow spatially linked. And using our methods, we, we can try to solve for the global challenges like urbanization, environmental crisis, use of natural resources, security, migration, and the list goes on and on. Um, how do we, uh, what, what do we provide? So uh, the aims of our master's programs, so we have these ex explicit aims to give the students theory and practice, so skills in, in uh, theoretical skills and also practices to, to use geoinformatics methods, also substance knowledge on geoinformatics, and information from the latest research and combine that with these implicit aims. So there's group working skills, presenting skills, uh, project working skills, all kind of more softer, softer sk skills and aims that we have. And the aim is to combine these to 
produce skilled experts for the society. Um, our program is built so that uh, everyone has to have um, or take basic courses in uh, all fields, and then you can concentrate in the advanced studies to, to one or two topics that you find most interesting. And the idea is to provide a strong foundation to all aspects of geoinformatics. Um, we're going to go into the course names in, in a bit later, but this is kind of the giving the basic idea we have. So the structure typically is that we have, um, so it's 120 credits total. A major studies are half of that, so 60 credits. And there's uh, common studies, compulsory studies, half of them, and then advanced elective studies, half of that, uh, like the other half of the major studies. And uh, these are typically done on the first year of studies. And then uh, the second year is then elective studies and master's thesis, which are also both 30 credit points. And currently the structure is also um, planned so that the common studies, the compulsory courses are usually done in, in the first uh, fall. So when you start your studies, the first, um, first half year is about these uh, common studies and then in the spring spring term uh, you can start choosing the topics you are interested in. Um, here are the <coughs> course, na course names of the courses we have. So for the uh, compulsory first year uh, common studies we have basic courses on all the topics. So there's geodesy and positioning uh, from measurements to maps, which kind of gives the whole idea how to come from measurements to to this ready um, presentable maps. Uh, then there's introduction to spatial methods, which is then uh, the background for the spatial analytics course and theories and techniques in GIS. And then there's also the um, course which provides background or kind of the basic information in photogrammetry, laser scanning, and remote sensing. In advanced studies, we have um, eight courses, which are also, um, uh, so all of the compulsory courses are five credits per course, and also these uh, advanced studies are five credits per course, except for the project course, which is 10 credits. I'm gonna show a slide about that later. But there are seven courses for you to choose from in, in the spring term. So you see that there's advanced courses in different topics and then um, um, one course about photogrammetry and spatial data science. And then there's the um, GIS development course, which is like a mini mini project course. Um, our 10 credit project course um, runs always on the fall. So usually people take, or we advise people to take it on the second year. So it is organized so that um, we have uh, Finnish companies and research institutes, other public sector organizations that offer topics for our project course and then our, our um, clients to the students running the project. And the idea is to learn um, how to apply geoinformatics for a real life project that you get uh, something to work on and then you start solving how, how do I want to, how, how can we uh, proceed with this? Uh, it also provides basics for project management skills, uh, self-directive teamwork, so it's always groups of three to five working together and also this client-centered working mode where you need to contact the client and ask what they want. And there's uh, also the part that students really like is this reflection where you kind of see how you are working in a team and, and how you, how you can, um, how it affects you and how you affect others and 
I think it's a good, good skill for the um, work life. Uh, this year uh, we have two two groups, and their topics are um, analyzing the impacts of an urban development plan using ArcGIS urban ab application. So this was from from a company um, where they wanted this uh, application tested, and um, Another topic is then benchmarking web-based 3D model data visualization platforms. So, so that is also um, coming from a client that they have something they want tested and our students are now doing those tests. Um, then it's also possible to go for exchange during the two years of the master's program. Um, Usually, it, it's the elective courses that get done during the exchange because um, that's the easy easy slot to put them. And the best timing for this would be the fall of the second year. So um, it, it's kind of advisable to have the first year courses uh, in in one go. Um, Aldo has over 50 destinations all over the world. Uh, currently we have, or this year, so in the spring term and now now in the fall, I know we have students in in Lisbon, in Prague, in Vienna, and then also in, in Svalbard, so up north studying ice. So, and also to other places, but these were the ones that came to, that I knew from this year. Um, then have we, of course, have summer job internship possibilities. Um, our students, uh, so these are some, some titles that they have had during their studies. So it can start as a summer job and continue as a, a working part-time during studies or doing a master's thesis for the, for the company or for the um, employer. So GIS trainee at a company, technical support at a company, or then a uh, typical title is a research assistant if you, if you end up working in a university or research institute environment. And then where do our students, uh, what type of jobs our students end up in? Um, there are many options, a lot of different options in different sectors. So in um, in companies, in academia, and also in like governmental uh, institutes and, and bodies. Uh, here are some examples where our students have ended up. So doing digital image processing using neural, neural networks, spatial data analysis, creating and maintaining coordinate systems, so those are kind of the base base for navigation. Uh, specialize, specializing in IT with spatial data orientation, uh, turning reality into digital 3D models or or and maps, and then of course this uh, monitoring changes in the environment, uh, inventories of natural resources, analysis from satellite images and measurements. Um, are used, and we were discussing that typically the the titles that our students end up with are like project manager, data analyst. Um, what did we? What else did we come up with? Um, but all those kind of uh, job titles can exist in all these companies. Um, government jobs or in, in the academia. Yes. Then um, on our web pages, which Lisa already linked there in, in the chat, is also this uh, few of these uh, student stories. So Gre Gabriel Kramer came, came to geoinformatics without much background. His story is quite interesting. I'm not going to read it out loud here, but just to give you a hint that there's there's a story in the web pages. Also, 
um, Osama bin Shafat, who's, who's from uh, Pakistan. His, his story is there on our web pages. So if you, if you want to read or learn what, it, what is it like to come from outside of Finland and study at Aalto, there's interesting stories. Uh, then um, I don't know if I am the best person to discuss the student life because I never studied at Aalto or at the predecessor of Aalto myself. And of course, we have had this Corona uh, close, closed campus for quite some time. So now this is the first first fall that things are coming back to normal. But there's lots of things happening on campus. The student life at in Otaniemi is very lively. Uh, there are lots of traditions um, linked to the uh, student life. One of the most visible one is this overalls, which you might have seen in some earlier figures, but here's the pink, pink overalls. So students typically wear those uh, on, <laughs> not when studying, but when on, on free time and when partying and so on. Um, yeah, then we have a student telling about this, uh, how, what is it like to study, although she's been mostly studying remotely, but at least you hear something about the courses we have. Then there's the Aalto uh, Student Union, which is a community that offers also different hobbies. So you can do sports, games, music, theater, dance, culture, society, internationality within those just Aalto uh, Student Union activities. And yeah, Helsinki metropolitan area is also quite lively. Um, there's some student benefits that are given to all, all students in Finland. So typical uh, benefits are the student discounts. So there's the student uh, lunch um, price that you get from university cafeterias. And the student discount for the public transport, for gyms, stores, museums, just just about any anything can have a student discount. Uh, there's the uh, uh, Aalto has housing options for students coming in. Uh, they are usually a bit or somewhat cheaper than the houses on the open market or apartments. Then we have this Finnish student health service, uh, which is um, available for all students. So the, uh, there's the fee, some 40, 50 euros per year, per term, yes. Um, and then all the general and uh, mental health appointments are included, also dental health. And you can see specialists and and um, physiotherapists and everything at their locations. So they have three locations. One of them is in Otaniemi, so close to the university buildings. Then we have the Unisport, so which is the uh, university sports service. Uh, it also is quite affordable. It, it has the student pricing and it has uh, both um, uh, um, like that you can go and play, for example, uh, squash or tennis or whatever, or then you can go to the gym or then there are these um, like passes that if you want to go and do some um, group exercise, that, that's also possible. Um, then few words about the admission. So uh, the alta.fi admission services is the best best place for detailed information. A uh, few words here that the application period for the masters is once a year. This year it's going to start on the 2nd of December and end, end just after New Year. So if, if you are planning to apply it it might be a better idea to do it before the new year than after. 
there's also the application instructions, information on the tuition fees and scholarship opportunities on those sites, and then the more detailed admission requirements. And if you have any questions, there's this admissions at alda.fi address where they know, know more than we do about these details. I just wanted to uh, share you shortly the admission requirements we have for our program. So the student selection process is, is quite competitive and it's paper-based, so we are not interviewing people. Um, you send us the, the papers and we, we review them and then rank them based on this, these criteria. So there's the academic performance, how, what is your, um, how good your grades have been in your previous uh, studies, how relevant your studies are compared to geoinformatics, and how good is the university or school you have uh, been to to get those previous studies. So those are the uh, basic information. Um, and then we ask you to write this motivation letter, which allows us to um, estimate your motivation and commitment to the to the topic and how what your study skills are and so on and so forth and then there's these other areas of competency for example if you have work experience in our field that's always a always a bonus or if you do, do some uh, i don't know pro bono work analyzing some stuff that is related to geoinformatics that is also good to mention in the application. Okay, so um, if you have any questions now, you can write them in the chat. You can send me an email or our planning officer is, is Päivi Kauppinen, who also knows about the uh, courses more. I don't see any questions. At this moment, yes, so we can, can we unmute or is it better to write in the chat? Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. So my question was, I heard that in Finland, the entrepreneurship culture is really strong. Mm -hmm. How uh, have the past geoinformatic international students in particular. Uh, do you know if they have started any ventures and how good would you say the scope is? Because uh, for me personally, if I do choose to go to Finland, I would like to leverage eventually on that culture of entrepreneurship, if I can graduate properly, that is. Um, yes, uh, well, um... Yeah, there's there's a very strong culture of on entrepreneurship at Aldo, and there's a, like lot of lots of opportunities to apply for different types of projects and and fundings that exist. Um, I don't know if we have maybe Matti knows better if we have international students that have become entrepreneurs. I, I have been at Aalto for three years, so my perspective is a bit short. Oh, yeah, this question may be out of the scope of this webinar, so I do apologize. I was just no, uh, it's curious. Fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but maybe Matti can answer better. Okay, thank you. Yeah, maybe I remember some Finnish students, but uh, currently maybe... Uh, not international students from our program, but but as Maria said, uh, there are. I think Alto provides a lot of possibilities as different courses and and his international community and and that kind of things which supports that kind of career. Oh, so you're saying that uh, if we do choose to go through that route, we would get 
some support from the university itself? Um, yes, there are these kind of incubators type of things. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I, yeah, this is not my <laughs> my expertise, it's but it's yeah. fine. It's fine. Thank you for answering nonetheless. Thank you. Yeah. That would be Thanks. my question. Uh, then in the chat, there's a question. Uh, scholarship for the tuition. Um, um, so based on the number of international students, we get uh, a, num a number of full um, um, full scholars scholarships and we rank when we rank your applications if you're eligible to uh, come to our program at the same time we we rank the people who have applied for the scholarship who, who gets the full full scholarship um, there's also an option for this par partial so like half half scholars scholarships but it's it's the it's based on our, uh, yeah, when we rank your application, it's done at the same time. But full scholarship is is possible. Um, can someone with a background in urban and regional planning be considered for this program? Um, yes, we have people from very different backgrounds. Um, you just need to... Um, show that you are interested and motivated to learn new things. Um, that can be shown example if you have done some like special courses in, in GIS or some open open access courses in the topic that shows it very nicely. And people from I think the uh, some of the kind of the most uh, unusual backgrounds is there was one one student from the background of um, um, what was it like uh, um, tourism studies like a tra travel something and then there are people who have background in um, um, like captains sea captains and very different background so background is usually not a not a problem if you just can show that you are motivated and interested enough in the topic uh, the admission ac acceptance rate well it depends how many people apply we can take 20 in last year i think we had something like 50 40 to 50 applicants so about half get into the program. Um, skills related to math and computer programming. Can I apply uh, the master program with the Bachelor of, of Architecture? Um, yes, that sounds fine. Sure. Yeah, de definitely if there's like um, because um, there's lots of lots of programming, especially on the first on the first courses. So if you know that already, you, you should be fine. Do you want to add something, Matti? Yeah, in particular, if you have background and skills related to math and programming, these these are very very good background for for our program yeah and then um, thesis so master's thesis um, um, so we for the master's thesis we count uh, like six months of work usually so it's 30 credits worth um, um, people um, the most, like usually the people do master's thesis in a, that they find a topic they are interested in, then find a company or research institute that is willing to pay for them to do topic or work related to that topic. So then they are paid 
for doing the thesis. And usually it, it is half, half a year. Um, it's also possible to do it on your own time and then just discuss it with a, a supervising professor. Um, but yeah, usually the um, supervising professor can tell what is doable and what is not. I'm not really sure I understand what is criteria for thesis. Yeah, if the question relates to the topic, then uh, the criteria is that it should the topic should somehow be related to our our fields as uh, geodesy, photogrammetry, laser scanning, remote sensing, or geoinformation technology. So somehow link it. To these fields? Um, if you cannot complete the thesis within six months, yeah, then the thesis time will be extended. That's not a problem. Uh, one of the criteria for the evaluation of the thesis is how, how well it was uh, on time. So if you plan to do a thesis in six months and it ends up taking uh, 12 or 18 months, then the grade will be lower, but it will still be ex accepted. So that's not a, that is not a thing. Um, yeah, the, the master's program is nominally two years, but, um, People have different situations, and if you go to uh, uh, study abroad, it might not be possible to do the studies in in two years. So, I think there's uh, what is the time limit? Is it three or four years for the for the masters before anyone starts asking any questions? Of course, if you come from abroad and you get a a scholarship, then you are more limited with the time because the scholarship is only for, for two years. But uh, otherwise, there is no, we don't kick anyone out at two years because of this uh, lifetime limit. Language requirement. Um, yeah, I would advise you to go to the admission site and check the language requirements there. We are not experts on that. But I know that some, there are um, countries that are exempted from having this language uh, test done, but I, I don't know them by heart. So please go to this admissions page. All right. Last minute to All right. I think we can call it a call it a webinar. Thank you. Oh, there's more. One more question. Um, if you have done geography GIS courses, I I cannot tell you directly if it's enough or not. We need to see the kind of the all the all the paperwork, but it's it's definitely a bonus and it's kind of showing that you you have skills in that topic. So it sounds very good, but I I cannot promise you that it fills the criteria immediately. But yes, we we see when we see all the applications how they rank and then then we know if something is enough or not. We don't know it in advance. 
Okay, but if you have any further questions, just contact me. I think that the email is here, or then Päivi Kauppinen is the planning officer. And we can call this or end this webinar. Thank you for participating and having so many questions. I feel like we have, it's always nice to have active participants. Have a nice day and week. Have a nice, have a nice day and week. Bye.